Hey there, welcome to the Youth Stop channel and welcome to this full uke interview of the Pomaikai Soprano Ukulele. Now, if you are interested in the quick summary of this, you can find the printed PDF document at ukeguide.info or ukestuff.info. Otherwise, this video is all about this instrument. So we're gonna go over subjective categories, then we'll go over the specifications, and then I'll give you a summary and a uke guide rating for the instrument. This instrument was not sent to me for review. I bought it myself, finally showed up on Keepa.com, and it had attracted my attention for some time with the Musibi sound hole. And in fact, let me go grab one of my Kolohas so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the Pomaikai. This is a Koloha. Uh, this is the Opio long neck soprano, uh, solid acacia. But as you can see, there is a similarity in that sound hole a bit. Now, is that shape different? Absolutely. But that really attracted me to this instrument and made me want to check it out. So I just waited until I saw it at a good price and then I bought it for review. So I've had it for a while and it's time to finally review this one. Okay, so I had to put that down and now we can continue on. Let's go into the subjective categories. The first is cost. Right now, this, along with this really super thin useless gig bag is $55 on Amazon. Um, and you also have to kind of like scroll through the Pomaikai options there to find this one as an option. Um, yeah, so the price, that's expensive as a $55 ukulele goes for what you're getting. And then as we talk about value, it's the value is, is very low. The build quality is not great. And on top of that, which we'll get to in a second, but on top of that, there are sharp front ends and the action is absolutely terrible. And along with the fact that all you get is a super thin gig bag, $55 is way too much for this instrument. So yeah, uh, the value is just not there. The build quality is a little rough here. Sharp front ends, really bad action, and really it's it's the action, because this is an instrument that's aimed towards beginners. So if there is any instrument that needs to be set up correctly, it's beginner level instruments. Um, pros have uh, sort of preferences. So uh, I have one friend who keeps all of his action extremely low on his instrument. He also has some arthritis in his hands, so he doesn't want to press very hard. Totally understandable. If I have action that low, sometimes I'm going to strum so hard and so vigorously just in normal playing that um, I'm going to get buzzing. So I want my action sort of more, I'm like in that middle range. I like the action to be about 0.5 millimeters at the first fret and 2.65, really anywhere between 2.5 and 2.75 at the 12th. That makes me pretty happy. Um, this is off the charts here. We'll get to that later in, in the review and also... Uh, well above one millimeter at the first fret. So it's just, the action is too high. And our, most beginners aren't gonna be able to set that up themselves. They're gonna have to take it to a luthier to do it or to a guitar shop to do it that may or may not know how to work on ukuleles. And the cost to adjust the action is going to be more than the instrument itself. So um, yeah, that, that build quality of action alone is is pretty bad. Also, when you look on the inside, there's glue mass. Um, it's just one piece of kerfing, which is not a bad thing. Ohana does that on a number of its models, including models that cost well over $100, some over $200. So it it's used in the industry, um, but it's it's messy in there. So let's go take a look at the inside of the ukulele. Okay, let's take a look at the inside of the Pomanka here. Looking, there is a tail block. You can see quite a bit of glue mess. There's that straight kerfing and glue strings all over the place. And you can even see how that little bit of kerfing is just kind of stuck and folded over there. A glue string hanging there that's not a spider web. And it's just messy. I mean, the laminate is okay, but it's just not a clean build at all. 
Now we're going to swing around here again and we will go take a look at the upper bout. So let's move the camera there. If you're looking at the upper bout, you can see more glue glue all over the place. Uh, very quickly made. Uh, sometimes it almost looks like the top isn't connected. A lot of glue on the neck block there. And again, you know, the laminate is just fine. This could be just a fine build, but it's just sloppily made on the inside. All right, and that's our quick look at the inside of the Pomakai uh, Soprano Ukulele. It doesn't even have a model number on the sticker. All right, so we're back. Yeah, the inside isn't the worst we've seen. You know, in this, we've had some recently. There was one that had the, the label actually stuck on the side of the instrument. Um, it's nowhere near that bad, and it's not horrific. But again, it's that first issue of action that just really impacts the build quality more than anything else. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is the bridge is kind of scruffy. And while it's really, really dark, I'm not sure I like the chips out of it where the screws are in. Um, yeah, just, just as a whole, um, you know, $55 can buy you so much more today than this. Um, so I just, yeah, ultimately the build quality isn't there as well. Um, mismatch colors on the neck, not very good. Now, I will say this laminate mahogany top is quite pretty with that dog hair. So, I mean, it's, it's attractive, but there are definitely build flaws with it. In fact, if I get in the, the light, you might even be so able to see there's some glue on a fretboard. So yeah, not great. Now in terms of appearance, I like how it looks. I, you know, I was attracted to that sound hole myself. Um, and the sound board is, you know, very thin and resonant. So that's a positive on it too. Um, so not only is it an attractive piece of mahogany, it's also, um, it it actually does a really pretty good job of creating sound, which we'll talk about later. And otherwise, I think it's pretty attractive. Um, not a big fan, again, of sharp fret ends. That's going to come back in playability. Um, you know, the headstock is a slightly different color than the rest of the body. But overall, it's it's attractive. Not a ton of features other than the sound hole. And of course, there are no side position markers, which is going to instantly... I keep its score at the end of this review to no more than a 3.5. Um, that's one of the things I've decided is that if an instrument doesn't have side position markers, it no longer gets any more than a 3.5 period. So that's something that all manufacturers just really need to do with all their instruments at this point. Now, in terms of availability, you can buy one of these right now from Amazon if you would like to. You just got to send the $55 to Amazon and they'll make sure that this one shows up at your door. Now, in terms of playability, it's awful because of the setup. It's also a very narrow nut. And again, the action is so ridiculously high. So you're, you're pulling notes out of two and you're having to press way too hard. And then when you're picking down here, even that's uncomfortable because it's so high. So the playability is just, just awful on this one. Now, in terms of sound, it really generates some good sound for its size. It seems small. So here's my Koloha soprano body in comparison. And you can see the Koloha's body is significantly larger than the Pomaikai here, but um, it does create some nice sound. You can really make it pop. So with a good setup, um, it could be really a good playing and good sounding ukulele where that $55 range would make sense. Um, then at that point, it might be a steal because the sound is actually pretty good. Um, it's got a little bit of a darker edge to it. And with different strings, I think you could get the shimmer that I like on ukuleles. Not everybody does, but that's kind of what I like. So um, overall, overall, I think it is a uh, pretty nice sounding ukulele with some good sustain, but it's the playability that just, you know, negates the value of this instrument. One of the things I do in these videos is I let you see what I'm hearing by playing the instrument, generally the C chord on a GCEA instrument, into the app Tonal Energy Tuner on my iPad. So you can see what happens with the entire Harmonic Energy series 
with the instrument as I play a chord and then what happens with the sustain. So here we go. So what's surprising to me is that it's really not picking up any of the overtones that I'm hearing, very little of the sustain, and the sustain that it's picking up is everything on the low end. So my ears are hearing a much more balanced sound than that, but then again, the app doesn't necessarily lie either. So I do think the sound is pretty good, but just be aware that you might want to try different strings. And again, I think the playability issues just make it not worth pursuing. All right, those are the subjective categories that I look at with all instruments. Now let's go through the specifications. It is a soprano ukulele, and the measured scale length from nut to saddle is 13.625 inches. It has 12 frets, like many sopranos, 12 to the body, no side position markers, although it does have those three front markers at five, seven, and 10. It is a double bout ukulele, and of course, it does feature sort of that, that pick-shaped uh, sound hole that looks very reminiscent of a koloha. The soundboard is made of laminate mahogany, as are the back and sides. The fretboard is made of black walnut, as is the bridge. And again, the bridge sort of looks a little goofy. Uh, the fretboard is not a radius fretboard, as you would expect. It's flat across, and the bridge is a tie bar bridge. The nut and saddle are supposed to be bone. They do look to me like plastic, but as it is listed as bone on Amazon's website, I'll just leave it like that for now. And it is not a compensated saddle. It's just a, a flat saddle across. The finish is sort of a flat satin, and it is pretty attractive. I really do like that dog hair pattern. It's 21.25 inches long from tip to tail, mainly because of that very distinct high-peaked crown. And it only weighs 12.3 ounces, which I think reflects the thin laminate that's used here. So they've got part of the formula for a really good sounding laminate ukulele. Unfortunately, just don't have the whole package together. The tuners are open geared, unbranded tuners that work just fine. Um, they're not grabby or anything like that. They turn just fine. I'll have to retune if I'm going to play any more here. The action at the first fret is 1.5 millimeters. And then the action at the 12th fret is 4.5 millimeters, which is just ridiculously high. It's just way too high. The nut width is a very narrow 34.37, so closer to 34 than 35. And the spacing is very tight. At the first fret, the space between strings is 8.49 millimeters, and it's only 27.87 millimeters G to A. That's really tight. And the depth of the neck at the third fret is 21.27 millimeters. So that's pretty chunky. It's, it's definitely a C-shaped neck with very little contouring. Um, it's deeper than it needs to be. And that is something else that could be remedied. So really, to make this a better instrument right off the bat, obviously action needs to be adjusted, which is something that I will have to play around with um, before I either give this one away or sell it. But then in addition, this instrument would really benefit from a wider nut and a slightly different shaped neck. All right, now that we've talked about the subjective categories and the specifications, let me summarize the instrument to you. This one really did catch my eye because of the sound hole, and I wanted to see how good it would be. For a $55 instrument, yikes, um, the action is just terrible. There was a time when ukuleles were shipped regularly with horrible action like that. But really, it's thanks to Kala, and then of course other companies like Ohana and Flight, that have continued to encourage the Chinese manufacturers to make sure that the instruments are playable right out of the factory. There's been a lot of work done there. This is an example of a company that didn't check the instruments after they were being made and said, um, no, I'm sorry, we can't sell them to consumers like this. 
And this sort of thing doesn't happen in shipping. It just happens when your quality control at the factory just doesn't check it out. With the action alone, along with some of the other things, sharp rut ends, um, sort of mismatched colors on the instrument, um, a terrible gig bag, really, for $55, there are so many other choices you can make. This one is just simply best avoided. So as I rate ukuleles, I give them a rating between zero and five ukuleles. You already know if you watch the rest of this review that its highest possible score would be a 3.5. Now, it does have pretty decent sound. I do like the sound of it. I would personally try other strings. The, the neck is really narrow. You, to really be happy with this, you need to have pretty small hands. And of course, the action is just out the roof high. So uh, with all those things factored, this one is a 2.0 out of 5 ukuleles. Anything on my channel with a uh, basically a 3 or above, you can buy with confidence of knowing that you're getting a playable, decent ukulele. Maybe there are some things wrong that you need to fix. When you get under three, avoid them. And this one is under a 2.5. This is a 2.0 out of five. All right, and that pretty much summarizes this review for the Pomaikai Soprano Ukulele with that sort of Koloha sound hole. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're having a great day and I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.